Look at me. I wonder if you are all seeing the same thing as each other right now. Whether you can see one or two of me. <laughs> Whether you can see that I'm quite tall and that I have long blonde hair. Our eyes take in a lot of information from our surrounding environment, which is then combined with previously stored information we have about the world, not all of which reaches our brain, which is a good job well done by the brain because we could never process it all. I couldn't guarantee that I could find a shadow of myself on this stage this evening. So here's one I made earlier. This is my shadow. I don't pay attention to it, it's just there. I know my shadow is there because my body has come in between the beams of light and the surface of the floor. I know that my shadow is attached to me, it comes with me everywhere I... Prop. <laughs> Seems quite simple for the most of us. But for somebody like Mr. Thompson, who I used to work with, well, he had Alzheimer's disease. He had trouble with vision and perception. So he had trouble seeing things like shadows. He couldn't tell the difference between a shadow being a shadow and it being a physical object. He would quite often try and step over his shadow because he thought it was a hole in the floor. Let's think about the impact that this could have on Mr. Thompson's day-to-day -day life in his care home. Well, every time he tried to step over his shadow, he was much more likely to fall. Falls are a common and serious health problem and can have devastating consequences, especially for someone with dementia. But shadows are everywhere. Let's transfer some scientific knowledge into clinical context. Mr. Thompson's care home were advised to improve their lighting. They were advised to draw the curtains when low light was flooding in in order to minimise the amount of shadows produced. <sighs> Look at me again. Just imagine the confusion if you thought that my shadow was a deep, dark, black hole. Confusion that can be minimised by simple interventions like lighting. Now we know all of this, but knowing it is just not enough. We need to transfer scientific knowledge into dementia-related environments in order to help them lead the best life that they can. Thank you.